Hey everyone, today I am here to share a quick update about SkateCAD. I have a new version of SkateCAD Live today and I just wanted to talk about some of the features. So first off, if you don't know what SkateCAD is, it is a skateboard design software I've been building at skatecad.com, S-K-A-T-C-A-D.com. And I just launched a bunch of new features. I can't make this announcement without acknowledging and thanking my Patreon supporters for supporting SkateCAD. Um, there's a Patreon SkateCAD page where members get access to member-only updates, uh, tips for using the tool, early feature testing. Anyways, let's jump into the updates. So I've got about 10 I'm gonna go through. So the first one is progressive kicks. Previously in SkateCAD, you were only able to design angled kicks, which is defined by a curve that goes up at a straight angle. With progressive kicks, you can define a continuously curved kick tail and kick nose. This allows you to have way more freedom over the shape of your board that's way more custom and can produce a board with a more organic feeling nose and tail. The cost that it comes at though is the organic parameters can be a little bit more tricky to understand because it's not simply just an angle and a radius. So don't worry too much about it if you don't know about progressive kicks or don't know how to use them. If you do, you could start playing around with the progressive kicks and make some really fun, interesting shapes. Okay, second update is advanced mode. So like I mentioned, the progressive kicks add a bunch of new parameters that can be a little tricky to understand. And oh yeah, by the way, you can also put kick concave in the progressive kicks, forgot to mention that. But Back to the parameters, there's a lot of parameters in SkateCAD now, and it can get really confusing, and I had heard that feedback before I added some new parameters, so advanced mode gives you access to all of those parameters, and if you leave it off, it'll remove all the more nuanced parameters, so you have a much easier to understand designing experience. So if you're a beginner, you may want to leave advanced mode off so that it's more easy to make the shapes that you wanna make. If you're a more advanced user, maybe you wanna play around with some of the more nuanced specifications. The third feature update is, going through my list here, deck thickness and truck hull pattern. So you can now set the deck thickness to whatever you want. Previously it was around 7 16 7 inch. And the truck hull pattern, so you can have a custom truck hull pattern like an old school truck hole pattern. These two features also enable a fourth feature update. I'm considering it a fourth update, which is fingerboard design capabilities. So because you can set a thinner deck thickness and a unique truck hole pattern, you can now design fingerboards. And I added an example fingerboard shape to the example shapes dropdown. So you can check that out. The thing you'll need to keep in mind if you're designing a fingerboard is treat the units as centimeters instead of inches. That'll just make the designing process a lot easier and work a little bit smoother, in my opinion. And then when you export your model, just remember to scale your model accordingly when you are using it in a 3D printing, in a 3D printer slicer program or like a CNC program. And just remember you designed it based on centimeters. All right, the next two have to do with the display. So the fifth update is standard views. Sometimes it's really helpful to just have like your standard top down view, your side view, or like a specific angled view. So now we have three views you can choose from when you want to look at your board. And the sixth update is the nose direction indicator which is a simple arrow that points in the direction of the nose of your board. Again, super helpful if you're having a hard time trying to figure out or trying to keep track of which way your board is facing. A lot of boards are very asymmetrical, so it's pretty easy, but if you're making a more traditional street deck, for example, that has just a slight bit of asymmetry and has a popsicle shape, this is gonna be really handy for helping you keep track of what way your board is facing. 
The seventh new feature is a shape library. The shape library is a collection and it's a growing collection of pre-designed skateboard shapes. So this is gonna make it way easier to start a new shape because you'll have access to things like shovel noses, eggs, longboards, cruisers, a bunch of fingerboard shapes. These are all included in the shape library and I'm going to continue adding to the shape library. This library is going to be ac accessible only if you are on a user plan and I'm gonna speak more about those in a minute. The next update is also a pretty big one, which is the ability to save and load your designs. If you have used SkateCAD in the past, you know that saving and loading was pretty inconvenient because you'd either have to record all of your specifications manually or export the CSV file, and then you'd have to re-enter in all that information one by one if you wanted to reload your design. Now there's a simple save button and a load button that will allow you to quickly save and load your designs. So it's a huge time saver, especially for board builders running their businesses that need access to a tool or a feature like this. Again, this is also going to be accessible only on a user plan. Ninth is a step file purchase button. So SkateCAD doesn't have the ability to export step files right now. And I know some of you need step files for use with your equipment. So I figured the least I could do is help streamline that process with a simple purchase step file button. These step files are generated manually, so there is a fee for generating them. The last update I want to mention is the light user plan that's now available. It's the new plan that's the lowest cost plan and it gets you access to some of those time saving features I mentioned like saving and loading and the shape library. My goal with these updates is to give SkateCAD users more creative freedom to make the tool easier to use and to offer some bonus features that will also help contribute to the financial sustainability of the tool. Remember, if you do choose to support the tool, you're supporting a small skater-owned business on a mission to make skateboarding more accessible around the world. Every single supporter makes a difference, whether you are supporting as a user on a user plan or through Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you'll consider joining at least our light plan or joining us on Patreon. And I plan to be back next week with a new SkateCAD spec video.